experience and not everyone's experience is worldly. There's many of us who have been blessed to experience and witness the hidden mysteries and the truth of the hidden realms. Through my experience with warfare, I was able to receive revelations about the spiritual principalities that we fight on a daily basis. And through my experiences and my testimony, I'm here to shed light on these things. I'm here to help you receive deliverance. This is Deliverance Through Knowledge. Good morning, guys. How are you guys today? My name is Stephanie, and this is Deliverance Through Knowledge, Part 3. In this episode, we are going to be talking about spiritual warfare relating to odor, body odor, spiritual odor, etc. So before we go into this topic, I understand that odors are from various forms. There's, you know, body odor. There's odors from other people. I want you guys to understand as well that there's odors even from spirits even from occultists, even from witches and warlocks, okay? And I want you guys to understand that there's even odors in your home. However, in this segment, this episode, we're only going to be discussing the odors from the spirits, the odors from your body pertaining to spiritual warfare, okay? Listen, before we even get too deep into this segment, I wanna just say this. This is a very mature topic. It's also a very sensitive topic. I want all of us who are watching this topic, listening, tuning in, I want us all to be mature about the subject matter and understand something that if this has not happened to you, it does not mean that it has ha it has not happened to other people, okay? So we have to respect everyone's experience because here's the thing, it may not happen to you today. It may not, however, this may happen to you later on and i noticed that some people when they listen to spiritual warfare topics and sometimes they become very judgmental and sometimes they can be very you know they can they can speak rationally without understanding the situation and of course people like to be very logic and yes it's understandable that we think logically however Relating to spiritual warfare, sometimes logic does not make sense when it comes to spiritual warfare because spiritual warfare is what we battle against when it comes to spiritual principalities. Oftentimes when we are battling against spiritual principalities, we're not able to see exactly what is going on because the spiritual principalities are in the unknown. We're not able to see it unless we are literally able to see in the spirit. So if you're not able to see in the spirit, please be very respectful about everyone's experiences. There's some people that can't see in the spirit and they don't understand what is happening to them and these things are indeed happening to them. And this is where people like myself and many others who are knowledgeable about these things, who can see these things in the spirit, this is where we come in and we educate people. We try to help people be delivered through knowledge because let me tell you something, knowledge is a form of deliverance. And when you have knowledge, you understand exactly what to do, how to do it, and the best thing about receiving knowledge about spiritual warfare is you understand that you are not over exaggerating, you are not crazy, you're not overthinking, and that is what will ultimately help you fight the good fight. So the types of body parts that these spiritualists will target relating to you or the spirits that are sent to you will target. There is the armpit, there is sweat, there is the, the mouth, there is also the private area. Also understand that, yes, these things are external, but understand as well that odors can also be coming from you spiritually as well, because oftentimes when your spirit is under affliction, you can feel like things are rotting on the inside. You may not see it in the physical, but you could indeed smell it, okay? And you're not smelling anything physical, you're smelling the spirit, okay? If you have, listen, because we have so much senses when it comes to our gifts. Like, have you guys ever noticed that with your gifts, you're able to hear a lot? Like your, your ears are a lot more heightened. Like the senses of your hearing is like on a whole nother level. The senses of you seeing in the spirit is on a whole nother level. That is the same thing with your nose. That is the same thing with your smell. Sometimes we're able to hear in the spirit, see in the spirit, but not only that, we're able to smell in the spirit as well. So if you are very sensitive in the spirit and you have the gift to hear and see, I'm pretty sure you also have the gift to smell, where you'll smell specific things, but it's not in the physical, it's actually in the spirit. And when your spirit is under affliction sometimes, you can indeed smell your spirit that is under afflictions. And sometimes that will manifest from the spiritual into the physical, because remember something, Thing. everything that is done is done in the spiritual first before it manifests 
in the physical, right? And this is why God tells us, rebuke, denounce, and cancel. Because once we cancel, rebuke, and denounce these things, they cannot manifest in the physical. So when you are smelling something, and you don't know where the smell is coming from, and you're like, man, I'm, I'm not smelling anything on me physically, it could be one of two things. It could be your spirit is under affliction, and you are smelling your spirit in, in the spiritual realm, or it can be that there is a spirit that has this odor that is indeed around you. Okay? And you have to also remember that it can also be people that are around you. It does not mean that the people that are around you are witches. It could mean that the people that are around you have monitoring spirits that are associated with them or following them as well. And that could be where the smell is coming from. Or it can be people around you who are also affected by witchcraft, who are also fighting this type of curse, this type of spell, this type of affliction, okay? Another thing that it can be is it could also be a witch that is around you. And here's the thing, witches don't usually smell. I know a lot of you guys think that they smell, but they don't usually smell. What it is, it's the spirit that they're using that is following them that smells. Most witches are very discreet and they like to be discreet. They don't want to be looked at as a witch. And even if they're a proud witch, they want to present themselves as good as possible they want to present themselves as clean as possible so most of the times a witch is trying to make herself not noticeable so therefore it's rare that you'll see a witch around you that is smelling really bad and she knows that she's smelling bad or a warlock in that case who knows that he smells bad it's very rare that they'll be walking around smelling bad again the only way that there'll be a witch around you that actually smells bad is if there's a spirit around the witch that smells bad. So the witch may not actually smell the spirit that's around her or the warlock may not smell the spirit that's around him, but there's definitely a spirit there. It's whatever spirit that they're using, it's whatever spirit that they've summoned up, whether it be from the graveyard, whether it be from the marine kingdom, whatever spirit they have summoned up, all demonic spirits have a very drenched, disgusting smell to them. It may not be an actual witch that smells bad. I know a lot of people are surprised to hear this, but it's not the witch that you're probably smelling. It's the spirit that they are using that is associated with them, that is following them, is what you are actually smelling. Remember that witches today don't look like witches like back then. <laughs> you know, witches today don't have like the pointy long nose with the bumps on it, you know, with the pimples all over their face, with their hair messy, smelling bad, the long black hats and... They do not look like how they look back in the day. The most dangerous type of witch is a woman who looks normal, who looks like she has things going for her, who looks like she smells good, and it looks like she has no negativity in her life. That is the most dangerous type of witch. Again, there's witches out there who openly admit they are witches, and they take pride in themselves. They take very good care of themselves, and you're not going to see them out here, you know, smelling bad because they want to represent who they are very well and you know most witches who are out here bragging that they're witches it's a pride it's a cocky thing it's a form of control it's an egotistical type of thing but the witches who are actually very discreet those are the most dangerous witches and those are usually the witches that you would never think that are actual witches even with the warlocks you would never think that they're actually warlocks and again if you are around the witch or warlock who is a discreet type of witch or warlock they're not gonna smell, it's going to be a spirit that is around them that is smelling, but they also have spells to discreet themselves. So the question is, how are you going to differentiate the difference between someone who is under warfare who has a smell or someone who is under warfare who has a monitoring spirit attached to them or following them because of a spell compared to an actual witch who has a smell because of the spirit that they are associating with? How are you gonna differentiate the difference? Well discernment, prayer, asking God. Before making assumptions and before accusing people and pointing fingers, it's very important that you always take everything to God and that you use your spiritual discernment. Because here's the thing, a lot of warfare that we go through, there's many other people in the world that go through the same thing, except guess what? They don't even know it's warfare. They don't even know what's going on with them. However, we may look at them and be like, ew, they stink. Oh my gosh, they look like a witch. They look like a warlock. And guess what? They may not even be a witch or a warlock, but what it is is the warfare that we're fighting, they're fighting the same warfare. The difference is we're knowledgeable about it. The difference is we have discernment. The difference is we know what's going on. They don't. So it's very important that you don't point fingers and judge people, especially when there's a scent, because again, it can be someone that is carrying the scent because of something that's being done to them, or it can actually be, yes, it can be a witch or a warlock that's associating with a spirit that has a smell. But again, like I tell you guys all the time, if it's an actual witch, 
and it's an actual warlock, they're very good at hiding the scent, okay? Especially when there's a spirit associating with them, they're very good at discreeting themselves and hiding the scent. And if you, and if you can, can smell, smell the spirit, spirit that, is that is around the witch, because, because she's, she's not really, not really good, good at disguising it, it's, it's most likely going to smell like sulfur, like sulfur which, which is, you know, you know an, an indication, indication that, that that is, that is the spirit, spirit, that is the demon that she's using. using. That is that a is demon, a demon that's the spirit, spirit that she is operating, operating under. under. Okay. okay. Um, um, it's, it's rare, rare that, she'll that she'll smell like fishy and the egg, egg, egg smells, smells are smelling you know, a coming scent from near a witch or because warlocks witches are very good at disguising. It, it, it is things. going to be sulfur. Okay, but if you are dealing with an undercover witch, chances are you may not even notice that she or he has a smell. Okay, because they're very discreet and they're very good at hiding with okay. them. We're gonna talk about how these types of spells are done to people. And I'm gonna start off with this topic. I'm gonna start off with this one manipulative tactic you know witchcraft manipulation can affect the way you take care of yourself if a spiritualist or someone is using witchcraft to drain your energy to make you fog to bring the spirit of stagnation on you spirit of oppression on you we already know when it comes to the spirit of oppression it feels like you're being squeezed it feels like you're being like the life is being sucked out of you it feels like you're being extremely drained and the thing about it is that when you are extremely drained you don't even have the energy to do the basic things in life you don't have the energy to take care of yourself you don't have the energy to clean you don't have the energy to cook you don't have the energy to take care of yourself and if you don't have the energy to take care of yourself what does that mean it means that if you can't cook you can't clean you can't organize your home you're gonna have a very hard time taking care of yourself along this video you guys are gonna see many references from many people whenever I see things online referring to witchcraft attempts the witchcraft attacks things that I know that I've experienced in my life and that I have been afflicted with in my life as well I usually save these videos and I also leave the references as well so what I'm gonna be playing right now is a reference video from a woman that I scrolled and I saw on TikTok. Her TikTok is dot changes 22. And she's also Jamaican like myself. And she has also experienced witchcraft afflictions as well. She has a very crazy testimony similar to my testimony, but she's also very knowledgeable about the witchcraft attempts. And this is one of her references relating to them storing your energy in a bottle. And this is absolutely true. And I'm also going to show you another reference of how they do this later on in the video as well. Okay. But this is her video. Do you know what a witch bottle is? A witch bottle is something that is used to trap energy. This is used widely. It is used when you pray, people might try to trap your energy. When you get emotional, when you get upset, when you get enraged. Have you been feeling lately as a child of God, extremely tired or sleepy or down? You just feel like you're extra tired. Now, I do not know this lady. I've never had a conversation with her, but I did notice that relating to the knowledge and wisdom of the things that I've experienced, she has similar knowledge and wisdom relating to these things as well, okay? And she's absolutely correct. When they want to trap your energy, they definitely use jars, glass bottles. They may even use wooden bottles, which I'm gonna show you a reference of that later on with the wooden bottle when they're summoning up a zombie spirit, okay? They also use coconuts as well. As I tell you guys this all the time, there's a reference from John Ramirez's video, his testimony, where he talks about a coconut that they use to manipulate the mind of their victims when they're doing this witchcraft and what they can also do is use that coconut to drain your energy make you lazy anything that they want to manipulate you with they will use the coconut they will use the jar or they will use the wooden bottle which i will again show you later on in this video but this is indeed true put all i put different i open up the coconut is to open up a head Wow. I open up the coconut, it's to open up a head. And I started putting all kinds of demonic things in a head and then shaking it. So if I shake it, I can confuse the person to commit suicide. Wow. So relating to the odor video, whenever they want you to not be able to take care of yourself, relating to your odor and taking care of the basic and the priority needs in your life, they will manipulate you into disregarding your personal hygiene by manipulating your energy and making you lazy, making you tired, making you sick, making you sore. So you don't have to strengthen the energy to take care of your hygiene, which can ultimately cause you to have bad odor. And oftentimes people on the outside, when they look at this and they look at you, 
and they make their opinions based on what they're seeing about you, they will instantly think that you're just dirty, you're just lazy, and that you have nothing going for yourself. And they will think the worst of you, not understanding what it is that you are fighting. When you are fighting the spirit of oppression and you have something literally, like it feels like something is keeping you still stagnant. It feels like there's an anchor on your foot. Literally, there's a lot of pressure just walking up and down the stairs, just walking to the kitchen, you feel like you're gonna faint because all your energy has been drained. What will end up happening is when it comes to doing your daily task, as in, okay, I'm going to wash my hair, brush my teeth, shower. You may either not do it at all, or you may end up doing it, but you won't spend time doing it. You get what I'm saying? Because you're just extremely tired. So people will mistaken you being under warfare for you being lazy. And they will think you're just dirty, you're just nasty, not understanding that it takes a lot of energy just to get up and walk to the bathroom, just to get up and use the bathroom, just to get up and brush your teeth. And oftentimes that's what the, the spirit of stagnation and the spirit of oppression is. And they do this to you so you can become stuck in the bed, so you can become drained, so you can become depressed. And when it's time for you to say, okay, let me go and brush my teeth, you're literally brushing your teeth, spitting out whatever the toothpaste, rinsing out your mouth and you're leaving. You're not flossing, you're not scrubbing your tongue, you're not spending time to do it because at the same time you're drained. Just that movement with your hand to brush your teeth is draining because why? You are under oppression. Why every single task feels like a marathon. You're out of breath doing everything. And you may be someone that you're not even like in bad shape. You may be someone that works out and all of that, but you have not been able to do it because of the spiritual warfare afflictions that are upon you. You brushing your teeth may be a marathon and you're like, man, I can't even do it. So you getting up, brushing your teeth, you're just brushing your teeth, rinsing your mouth and leaving. You know what I mean? Going in the shower, you may just go in the shower, you may just scrub yourself one time and leave. You may not be using a washcloth or anything to exfoliate. You may just be rubbing the soap on you just to leave. It's like, okay, I'm just gonna hurry up and take a shower for the sake of taking a shower because I have to take a shower. But you're not spending time and you're not being particular in what needs to be cleaned because you're under affliction because you wanna just hurry up and get back in the bed because of the spirit that is afflicting you. And those who don't understand warfare, they're gonna hear this and be like, oh, no, they're just lazy, they're just nasty. Dude. They don't understand how deep this really is. They don't understand that it's even hard for you to get up and even make yourself a pack of Roman noodles because that's how drained you are. So you're not gonna have the strength to scrub your back. You're not gonna have the strength to bend down and scrub your feet. You're gonna just run into the bathroom and just scrub your body quickly and leave, okay? So the first type of, you know, afflictions they will do to you to cause this is they will manipulate you into not taking care of yourself. And this is witchcraft manipulation. And they will do that by draining your energy with the spirit of oppression. They will do that by giving you a lot of anxiety and stress and making you feel depressed, making you feel sad. And before you know it, you're not taking care of yourself. Remember I told you guys something I said in the past in other videos, I said, these individuals cannot block you from your blessings. They can't, they can't block you from your blessings. The only way you can be blocked is if they get you to block yourself. And how do they do that? Spiritual manipulation. They do things to you to where you don't even have the time and the energy to take care of yourself. So then you start lacking in many areas of your life, okay? And this is one of the areas most people under warfare will start lacking in, and that is when it comes to their personal hygiene because they just wanna hurry up and do things for the sake of doing it because they don't have the energy to do it. They don't spend time to do anything. If anything, they're trying to figure out how they're gonna be able to sleep because they're so sleep deprived. They're not worrying about if they're showering properly, if they're brushing their teeth properly, if they're combing their hair properly, if they're, you know what I mean? Because they're just focused on, oh my gosh, I wanna sleep. And it gets so bad sometimes that when you're in the bed and you're going through warfare and then you start sweating on top of that after you've already showered, but you're not able to shower properly because you are under oppression, because you are depressed, because you have anxiety, because you have a lack of sleep. Now your sheets are starting to get smelly because you're sweating. And when you, we all know when you go through spiritual warfare, you will sweat at night, okay? You will sweat at night. And if you are not able to take care of yourself because of the oppression spirit and you wake up in the morning, you may not even end up taking care of your sheets and all of that. And that can all pile up. That can go into the home odor. The other way they can do this to you to where the odor affects your body is sometimes it's generational. If you guys notice some people in their generations, there's a spirit that transforms from generation to generation to generation. 
It could be a spirit spouse, like a spirit wife, spirit husband. It could be a spirit that affects everyone's hygiene in the bloodline. So this is a very specific thing and not everyone will resonate with this portion of it, but you'll notice that some people, their families have a certain smell. There's a certain scent that passes down from bloodline to bloodline. So the grandfather has a certain scent, the grandchildren have a certain scent, the mom and dad have, or the mom has a certain scent, or you know, the other vice versa, maybe the grandmother has a certain scent, the aunt. You'll notice that there's everybody has, you know how everybody has like a natural smell? There's, you'll notice that some people, their natural smell just smells really good, right? and just smells clean fresh or it doesn't even they don't even have a scent right and then there's some people their natural scent it just it's just a really weird unpleasant type of odor but you'll notice it's not them that has it it's everyone in that family that has that specific type of scent that means that there was something done in the bloodline centuries ago whenever ago that is affecting the family in this area as in like there's a spirit that's in the family that's affecting everybody that is placing this odor on them or it's a it's a spell that was placed on the bloodline a curse that was placed on the bloodline and this scent is passed down and again you'll know because you may go into someone's home like a friend's home or something like that and you may you may be hanging out with his friend at school and you may notice that this friend has a specific scent it may not smell bad but it's really unpleasant it's just like a oh like an unpleasant natural smell right and you may think that it's just maybe they didn't wash their clothes properly or maybe they're just some, they put on their clothes while it was still kind of wet so there's a bit of mold or whatever. But then you end up going over their home or something like that. And when you go to their home, you notice that the mom smells the same, the dad smells, they all smell the same and the whole house also smells the same. But this friend could be someone that showers every day. This friend could be someone that, you know, washes their clothes every day. But for some reason, the scent, the specific scent continues to come back and it comes back through their pores. It comes back through their sweat. No matter how much they shower, there's a specific scent that keeps coming back and it's just unpleasant. Some people, it may smell very bad and then some people, it's very unpleasant. Most of the times, that means that they're was a specific spirit passed down through generations or there's a curse that's been placed on the bloodline and this is one of the effects this is one of the symptoms of that specific curse that was passed down the bloodline to affect the family so then they you know it's, it's hard for them to be around people Pe like spells can be smelt okay you can sp spells indeed have a smell curses indeed have a smell right and some and like i said it doesn't it's not that it's always a, a really gross smell sometimes it's literally just an unpleasant scent and it's just a weird unpleasant scent that just you know it makes you like ooh, what is that kind of thing right that happens so this is something that could, could have been definitely passed down um through the bloodline another way on how they will target you with odor is they will specifically target you with specific odors as in it's not that they're just putting a curse on you and the odor is a side effect of the curse. No, there could be someone that specifically wants you to smell bad. Open the doll up, right? And I put meat in there, right? And then I put a demon assigned to it so her oh. insides can rot. So her insides can rot. And they specifically are targeting you to smell bad, right? So this is someone that's indeed, their main witchcraft ritual is, I want this person to smell like this. I want this person to smell like that. There, that's the main ritual that they're doing okay like i said there's some people that will do a curse send the spirit of oppression send the spirit of stagnation and you know do like a specific curse or something and the odor is a side effect of that curse or of that spell but there's some people that will specifically do a spell for you to smell you get what i'm saying so that's like the main category it's not a category within a category it's the main category is is smell they want you to smell right and they will specifically target you. So again, like I tell you guys all the time, when people are doing these specific types of spells, they have to be very specific. They have to use your photo, they have to use your name, and then they have to get something that represents what they're trying to affect you with, okay? So in some cases, they may go to the graveyard and, and pick up, the, let's just say they pick up, um, they pick up the graveyard dirt from someone who may have cancer and they're trying to affect you with it, right? They will use that specific graveyard dirt 
into their spell to make you become effective with that. And I'm gonna go into another segment relating to graveyard rituals. That's a whole other segment we're gonna do. But in this particular case, they would get, let's just say they're doing a witchcraft ritual with your with your photo, your name, etc. They will specifically get something that may smell bad. They may get an egg, okay? They may get an egg or they may literally get like someone's sweat they may literally go and get like someone's pee. They may literally go and get someone's poop. Like, and then what they will do is they will mix it with your photo, your name, and whatever they're whatever if they're using blood sacrifice, whatever animal they're using, they will mix this together and they will do their little ritual. And then you'll notice that whatever they mixed it with, that's what you're kind of smelling like. So if you're noticing that you're always sweating and you don't know why, and it just it's not just like a symptom from warfare. It's it's almost like okay, I know what sweating from warfare feels like and what happens okay and i know what it smells like but this time this type of sweating is on a whole nother level this type of sweating doesn't even smell like sweat it smells rotten it smells like i'm rotten from the inside it just does not smell like sweat at all then you know that this is a spell that's specifically targeting you in this specific area if you notice that there's a body part of yours that's smelling like eggs and it just doesn't smell good you know there's a specific person that's targeting that particular body part for you to smell like that if it's a situation where you may smell like poop or something and you don't know why you smell like that you know they're using poop in that specific ritual for you to smell like that right so there's symptoms from warfare but then there's specific spells specific things that are done directly too. Now, I want to tell you guys the difference between the smells, okay? So I already said that, you know, whatever, whenever they do a graveyard ritual, you have to understand that anyone that does a graveyard ritual and they're directly trying to make you smell, that means that they have to use whatever it is that they want you to smell like in that graveyard ritual. However, you have to understand that because they are using graveyard dirt in this ritual, that means that everything inside you is going to rot. It also means that your body parts are gonna smell like it's rot to me, okay? So the inside of you is going to smell really bad. Your breath is going to smell worse than it has ever smelled your whole life. Your pee, your urine is gonna smell horrible. Your liquids, your body liquids are gonna smell horrible. So even like, down there if you're a lady it's not only going to smell like fish it's going to smell like rotten fish if it smells like eggs it's not going to just smell like eggs it's going to smell like rotten eggs everything is going to be exaggerated in the smell department because they are using graveyard dirt whenever graveyard dirt is being used in a specific ritual that means they're trying to put death in your life and they are trying to make a part of your body a part of your life die okay so if they are specifically targeting your mouth and they want you to smell from your mouth your mouth is going to smell like that if there's targeting your private area whether you're a man or a woman it's going to smell like death it's going to be so bad to the point where you can't even stand the smell and again like i said it's going to smell rotten okay it's going to smell so rotten you're going to want to throw up you're going to want to vomit that is how you know that they are using a graveyard spell, okay? Compared to like a spirit spell spell, which is a marine kingdom smell, I'm gonna get to that part of the segment where I explain that to you, but when it's a spiritual spell that you're dealing with, the smells don't smell as bad. It smells horrible, but it's not a death type of smell. See, when you are fighting the graveyard afflictions, the graveyard spells that they've done to you, it literally smells rotten, okay? So I'm gonna give you some examples. If you ever cooked chicken and the chicken is ex is past the expiry date, you have not cooked it. It's raw chicken that's sitting in your fridge and it has been five days past the expiry date. You take the chicken out the package, the chicken is slimy and it has this foul flesh, gross smell to it and you throw it out. That is one of the smells that you will smell when there's a graveyard ritual being done to you, okay? Another example is eggs, just rotten eggs. Not boiled eggs or fried eggs. Eggs already have like a foul smell and a raw smell. That is our normal smell if you have like an infection or you know what I mean? But I'm talking about rotten eggs, okay? So another example of that is like stale asparagus. The best way to describe the rotten egg smell is beans. If you guys have ever cooked beans before, 
and you know obviously the beans don't smell but when you leave beans in your fridge for a long time and it starts to mold and it starts to smell and you forget about it and then you go and you open a container with black beans or you open a container with red kidney beans and you notice that it's slimy it's been in your fridge for a while and you forgot about it and it has that really raw nasty smell that is the smell the same specific smell as the rotten egg smell that you will smell like if a graveyard ritual or a graveyard curse has been done to you the other type of smell that it will smell similar to is rotten meat or just flesh just flesh that's been sitting in the sun and it just smells really bad to be honest the smell is so horrendous it's similar to like a dead body smell okay it's similar to that not exactly but similar to that and that is a really bad smell so these are the examples of what you will notice if a graveyard spell has been done to you now when a graveyard spirit has been summoned when a person that did a graveyard spell to you has also attached a demon from the grave which is basically a zombie a zombie spirit is a demonic spirit that they summon up from the grave. It's like raising the dead. And I'm going to show you a clip of this very shortly. But when they summon up a spirit from the grave, that spirit, you may not smell foul, you may not smell bad, but the spirit that they have attached to you, attached to your photo, attached to your name, or they may have put your photo or they may have put your name, things that belong to you in the same bottle, in the same jar or the same bottle that they put the spirit in that way the spirit knows exactly how to target you okay because what they do is they collect the spirit in a bottle and then they keep the spirit in the bottle and that's how they communicate with the spirit i'm going to send i'm going to show you guys a reference of that shortly and then what they will do is put your photo in that bottle as well along with your hair anything that belongs to you in that bottle as well and they will give the spirit the spirit specific instructions and that that's how they attach the spirit to you and when they attach the spirit to you again the curse may not be affecting you to where you're smelling bad but it's the zombie spirit that is around you so i'm going to give you an example of that you may smell yourself and realize you don't smell bad but there's a very foul smell around you and there's nobody around you that is how you know that they sent a zombie spirit how do you know this it's a zombie spirit because it's you're going to smell the same things that i described you're going to smell the nasty rotten egg smell the rotten chicken smell the rotten flesh smell you're going to smell the rotten bean smell you're going to smell those smells around you however there's no one around you and you don't smell like that yourself it's something around you that smells like that okay so that's how you'll know that they sent a spirit to you okay sometimes it's also you smelling like that along with them also sending a spirit to you. Now that is a wicked and demonic and evil person for them to not only send a spirit, but also affect you with it at the same time. That means that even if you clear away the smell from your own body, that spirit is still gonna follow you around and it's gonna make it seem like you smell even when you don't, unless you go into a fast and you pray against that spirit and you rebuke and denounce it. So I was scrolling across YouTube and I saw this travel vlogger. I love travel vlogs and I watch a lot of travel content. And I bumped into this guy on YouTube. His name is Chris Muslist, and he's actually Canadian. And he took a trip to Haiti and he actually spoke to Voodoo Priest in Haiti and they actually explained to him exactly what I just explained to you about the jars and about the bottles and how they collect the zombie spirit and how they utilize the zombie spirit to their advantage to affect the victims of the black magic of the graveyard rituals. So instead of calling the spirits uh, to come upon you for the voodoo priest, they will call upon the spirits and they will have a candle that is lighting right beside this and the spirits will come into this. And they will have the uh, the communication between the voodoo priest and the spirit will be done through this. And also, if um, they took someone's spirit, or like a zombie, they will put that zombie inside of this one, or either that one. That was just made out of a certain type of... The other way spiritual odor may affect you is they're not doing a spell directly to you. They're not trying to manipulate you in order to get you to not take care of yourself. 
but in fact they've actually sent a spirit so here's how you'll know like i mentioned earlier in the video how you'll know there's a spirit and it's, it's not you is because you will shower you will do everything you'll smell yourself you smell amazing you smell really good you know your home will be clean you know you have the the plugins in the wall your sheets are clean everything is good you're like okay i smell good everything is good but there's a specific scent that you're smelling that won't go away and it's almost like you're going around the room like sniffing the air like is it there is it there where is this coming from and you can deep clean your home again okay Go into the shower again. You're like, it's not you because you're smelling your armpits. You're smelling your body parts. You're smelling your breath. You're like, this is, it's not me. You're like, where is this coming from? My house is clean. There's plugins in the wall. Da, da, da. I don't know where this specific smell is coming from. Oftentimes when that happens, it means that either you're smelling yourself in the spirit, as in your spiritual body's under affliction, but then you'll know because if it's your spiritual body that's under affliction, you will feel the warfare on top of that right but if you're not going through warfare you're not feeling any spiritual afflictions or anything you feel normal you feel fine everything's good you're clean everything but you're smelling a specific scent it is because there's a spirit it's a monitoring spirit that's carrying this scent this is probably a spirit that was summoned up from a graveyard okay um i know a lot of people you know don't believe in like the whole zombie thing but let me tell you something the zombies are actually in the spirit. They're actually spirits, okay? And they're in the spirit. And when a person is using graveyard dirt, they can indeed summon up a spirit from the graveyard. This is definitely common, especially in Haiti. They do this in Haiti a lot. And they will put the spirit in like a jar or in a bottle and they will use the spirit to their advantage when it's time for them to, to do a curse on someone or when it's time for them to send the spirit to a particular person, okay? Um, so what it is, is when they summon up the, the spirit, you have to understand that the spirit's gonna come with odor. The spirit may have a flesh scent. Like, you know, when like, um, someone passes away and the flesh rots the spirit may have a flesh rotten scent like similar when you look at zombies in video games or zombies and movies and they have like open flesh and open sores and they're walking around like that and they look like they smell really rotten that's exactly how the spirits actually sense actually smell so you could be like in the home just you know you'll know here how you'll know is like i said you your home is clean you're clean everything's going well and it's like, you may be just doing your homework or be on the laptop, just doing your thing. And then the smell just comes out of nowhere and then it goes away and then it comes back and it comes out of nowhere and then it goes away. And sometimes you're smelling it for a long period of time and you're trying to look for it. That's the monitoring spirit that they sent you and the scent is lingering from that spirit. Okay. So when that happens, if you ever smell that, you're going to not only have to cancel rebuke and denounce but you're gonna have to pray it out you're gonna have to pray out loud and you're gonna have to say out of your mouth any spiritual spouse any spiritual wife or any demonic spirit or any zombie spirit that was sent to my residence that was sent to my home i cast you out i cancel and rebuke you in the name of jesus and then what you're gonna have to do is after you pray it out you're gonna have to anoint your home. You're gonna have to get that olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, okay? And make sure that when you do get the olive oil, you have already blessed the olive oil, which means that you have already covered and blessed olive oil 24 to 48 hours within a dry fast. Once you, you bless the olive oil, you take the olive oil, you anoint your doors, you anoint your windows, you anoint every door in the house because windows, doors, even mirrors, there are portals in the spiritual realm. If a, if a spirit can't come in your house from the front door, they will try to enter your home through the bathroom door. They'll try to enter your home through the bedroom door because doors are portals in the spiritual realm, okay? That's a whole nother video that I'm going to have to do for you guys. I'll take it. I have some more segments for you guys. That's a whole nother video I'm going to have to do for you guys. But make sure that when you cast out the spirit, you anoint all the doors and all the mirrors so they don't use any portals to enter your home. Okay. Another way how odor can affect you is, again, you may be smelling the spirit as in you may be smelling the zombie spirit that is summoned up from the graveyard with the graveyard rituals that they do. But also you have to understand that a spiritual spouse will also have a specific type of scent, okay? Which means that you're going to be smelling something funky or something strange or something unusual. It does not smell good. It's just a weird, funky or stinky smell. And that is indeed a spiritual spouse as well. Now, compared to the zombie spirit, 
How you know a spiritual spouse is sent to you is because the way how the spiritual spouse afflicts you is different from how the zombie spirit afflicts you and different from how the graveyard ritual operates, okay? So the spiritual spouse is actually meant to afflict you with this scent by sleeping with you, okay? That's the only way it can afflict you with this scent. So what the practitioner will do is whenever they're sending the spiritual spouse, they're going to give the spiritual spouse instructions to try to sleep with you. And not only that, but and the sneakiest way for the spiritual spouse to try to sleep with you is it will try to come into your dreams masquerading as someone that you may know, someone that you may like, even masquerading as like your future husband or your current husband or your future wife or your current wife, right? So the spirit spouse definitely has to trick its way into sleeping with you, okay? And usually that happens through the dream state, through the spiritual realm. And this is why God always tells us to wake up, cancel, re rebuke, and denounce if there's anything that happens in the spiritual realm or in the dream state. Because if we don't rebuke and denounce it, it means that we have received it. But that is how the spiritual spouse will try to get its way with you is it will wait until you fall asleep and then it will come into the spiritual realm, into the dream state and try to manipulate you into sleeping with it. And again, most of the times it masquerades itself as people you know, or someone you may like, or someone that you may be married to in order for you to sleep with them. Not only that, but if you have, you know, got rid of the scent from the spiritual spouse, then what will happen is if, even if the spiritual spouse is around you, people will think that you smell bad, even if it's not really you, because it's because the spiritual spouse is actually around you. Similar to the zombie spirit, how I've gotten rid of the gross smell off of your body, but you can still smell like there's something around you, right? That is how the spiritual spouse operates as well. It's definitely, um, it definitely does that in order for people to want to stay clear of you, to, for people to think that you smell bad. So the spiritual spouse mainly tries to implement that nasty smell on you by sleeping with you and if it can't implement that on you by sleeping with you what it will do is it will try to frame you to make it seem like you smell but you don't actually smell right the scent for a spiritual spouse is a it's a very fishy smell okay so here's the thing there's the bacterial vaginosis infections that's very common in women and men. However, the spiritual spouse smell would smell worse than that. It's going to smell like a very gross, rotten fish type of smell, right? And how you'll also know is because no matter how much you try to get rid of that fishy smell, it's still there. You can go to the doctor, you can take prescriptions, whatever you do, the smell is still there. That is how you know that you are definitely dealing with the spiritual spouse. The graveyard spirit will make you smell like rotten flesh, rotten eggs, everything just rotten, just gross. But the spiritual spouse has more of like a fishy smell, whether it's just a light fishy smell or a rotten fishy smell. You'll definitely know because it's gonna be very hard to get rid of and that's how you'll know you're done with the spiritual spouse. So also, let's just say the, the spiritual spouse tried to sleep with you in the middle of the night and you woke up and canceled and rebuked it. So now it was not able to affect you scent wise, the spouse may actually still be there, right? So you have to cancel and rebuke the spiritual spouse directly right? But if you don't do that, and but you do cancel and denounce and rebuke the spells from sleeping with you, what you did was you avoided that scent from being attached to you. But then again, the spells will be around you, which means that you may smell the fishy smell around you, but you know it's not coming from you. But, but other people may smell it and think it's actually you when it's not actually you. It's a spiritual spouse around you trying to frame you and make people think it's you to avoid them from coming near you. You. And the reason why the witch, witch practitioner warlock will send this to you is because they don't want you to get married. They don't want you to get married. So what they will do is they'll send the spiritual spouse to you to affect you. They, that spiritual spouse will follow you everywhere you go. And you, you may be smelling good as in like you're showering, you're taking care of yourself. There's no scent coming off you. That's bad, right? But you're smelling the scent around you. That's funky. You don't know where it's coming from, but also other people are smelling the scent that's funky as well and they're thinking it's you but it's not you it's indeed either the graveyard spirit or it's a spiritual spouse that was sent to you that is smelling like that and that spiritual spouse will follow you everywhere so it looks like you're smelling like that but you're not because you know you're like okay i don't smell you know how people say like you know you, when you smell yourself every day you won't know that you smell but 
I'm being, I'm telling you right now, like, like, you know, you smell good as in like you showered, you took care of yourself, you lotioned up your skin, you sprayed your nice perfumes on and you know, you're smelling yourself and you smell good because you can smell your perfume and everything, but there's a funky scent and it's not coming from you, but it's around you. People will oftentimes think it's you when you have a spiritual spouse around you that smells like that. And the reason being is because the spiritual spouse is trying to make it seem like it's you. The spiritual spouse does not want anyone to come around you. The spiritual spouse does not want you to get married. And this is why the witch practitioner or warlock will send the spiritual spouse. And then what also happens is if that spiritual spouse starts sleeping with you at night, you will get specific spiritual bacteria, okay? And the spiritual bacteria, just like when you sleep with someone in the physical and, and you sleep with them and you can catch an STD or you can get some type of like... Um, bacterial vaginosis or something like that if you sleep with people it in the physical and you know you're not being protected of course you can get specific infections right it's the same same thing in the spirit what will happen is if a spirit spouse is sent to you it's going to come to you smelling funky it's going to come to you with, with this weird smell and it's going to try to sleep with you and then when it sleeps with you you're waking up and your spirit is afflicted now and you're noticing that Parts of your body is not smelling right. So after that spirit has slept with you, because you'll notice like everything's fine. You were smelling that funky smell around. You didn't know where it was coming from. And then all of a sudden, something was sleeping with you in the, in the spiritual realm or in the dream. You did not wake up to cancel, rebuke it, and denounce it. You just continued to sleep. And now you're waking up the next day like, where did I get this infection from? Why do I smell like this? I wasn't smelling like this yesterday. I was not smelling like this all week. Where did this come from? And then you're noticing it's similar scent to what you were smelling. And then you're realizing now, okay, something must have happened. So what happened was your spirit became afflicted once the spirit spouse slept with you. And now you have a spiritual STD or a spiritual infection, which manifested in the physical because you did not rebuke, denounce, and cancel when it happened. You must have just continued to sleep or you probably didn't know what was happening. And then you notice that for some reason your, your hormones are off your pH balance is off and you're like, where is this all coming from? Because I'm celibate. I'm even not, I'm not even around anybody. You know, I'm showering every day. Like what is going on here? You know? So this is what happens. So yes, this can also be done through a spiritual spouse. What will also happen is if you are sleeping with a spiritual spouse and you're not aware of it and you're waking up and you're not counseling and rebuke it or how you also know that a spiritual spouse is actually taking advantage of you in the spirit is you also not only will you have that fishy smell but you're going to be very itchy down there it's going to be like a yeast infection that is not going away it's going to feel like ants are crawling in your private area that's how it's going to feel you know how there's certain witchcrafts that make you itch at night where your whole body's itching your legs your arms your chest everything like that when it comes to a spiritual spouse, that private area is going to itch, that butt is going to itch, everything in that area is going to itch, and you can go to the doctor, you can get tested, you may even be celibate, and you're like, man, it's been five years, it's been seven years, it's been three years, it's been four years, I have an STD check, I'm clean, you know, I got tested, I did my PAPS test. Even if you're a male, you may have done blood work, you may have done the tests and everything like that. And everything is coming back negative, everything is coming back clear. But for some reason, you have this fishy smell, you are itchy down there, and you can't, you can't even explain why. This is because there's a spiritual spouse involved. How you will know that this is indeed spiritual and this is not just something that you know, oh, I'm just having, you know, bad hygiene or whatever. You will know because again, you know your more your routine more than anybody else. You know how you brush your teeth. You know how you shower. You know how you wash your clothes. Like you know these things. Okay. Just like I said with the whole spiritual spouse situation, how you know you will know that okay, everything's going well one week, you're smelling good, everything's normal, and then you go to bed one day, you know, you're sleeping with someone, you don't know who it is, but you're sleeping with someone in the spirit, and then you wake up with these problems, right? So an indication for you to know that this is indeed a curse is when you notice you're having these problems, you will be like, okay, you'll know it's a problem because you don't normally sweat like that. Because why? Even when you do go through spiritual warfare, even when your spirit is afflicted, you sweat 
but it doesn't have a scent. You get what I'm saying? It smells okay. Because why? Because you wear deodorant to bed or you, you shower before you go to bed. So even when you sweat, there's no smell, right? Or there's no negative scent or whatever, right? You'll notice that the pattern changed. You'll notice that you went from smelling no scent. You, you went from sweating with no scent to all of a sudden you're sweating nonstop, not just at night, but now throughout the day. You're sweating 24 hours. You're, everything you wear, you're sweating. You could literally go, you could literally have the AC on and you're still sweating. And then you're noticing there's a scent and it does not smell pleasant. And you don't know where this came from because you've never had this issue before. It's the same concept with your breath. You'll notice, that, okay, you brush your teeth fine. You floss. You do everything you're supposed to do, okay? You brush your teeth before you go to bed, when you wake up in the morning, even throughout the day. Like you've been doing this for a while. You, your routine's on point. And then you'll notice that all these years you've never had a problem. And then all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're brushing your teeth and you cannot get rid of that smell out of your mouth. And you're like, where is this coming from? Okay. So same situation when it comes to your private areas. Okay. You're not sleeping with anybody. Your hygiene, your pH balance is good. Your routines have been always been the same. You have not done anything different. And you're noticing now that something is off and you don't know what happened, where it came from. And Again, everything is the same. Your routine is the same, which means that your diet is the same. The way you wash your clothes is the same. The way you shower is the same. And you've never had this problem before, but now all of a sudden you have it, right? So imagine now you go to the doctor for all these things. Doc, I need help with my hygiene. But you're noticing that no matter what the doctor prescribes you, what the doctor gives you, it's not going away. And you're like, what is going on? Because I've never had this issue before. That is a curse. Okay, that means that someone definitely has done something with some graveyard dirt. The main focus of this target is they wanted you to have this type of smell. This is someone that wants you to have bad hygiene. This is someone that wants you to be lonely. This is someone that just does not want you to be happy, wants you to be around anybody. They're specifically targeting you and targeting your body, okay? So I'm gonna read a scripture. This is from Job. This is Job 19, 17 to 19. My wife can't stand the smell of my breath and my own brothers won't come near me. Children despise me and laugh when they see me. My closest friends look at me with disgust. Those I love most have turned against me. Remember in Job, Job was so afflicted and he was afflicted in every single area and, but the afflictions could not kill him, right? This, when Job was going through these afflictions, these, this is spiritual warfare. Job went through everything. And a lot of it was also witchcraft manipulation and witchcraft, okay? And you have to understand something. This right here is a part of the spiritual afflictions, the odor. He, his breath was smelling bad. His body was smelling bad. He said his wife didn't want to be around him. Children laughed at him. His friends didn't want to come near him. Whenever there's a detailed curse being done and specifically they're trying to target you in this way, they want you to smell, like that's their main focus. It's not, I'm just putting a curse on him or I'm just putting a curse on her. It's literally, I want them to smell. Like that's what this person is trying to do to you, right? You're going to notice the smell is unbearable, okay? It's, it's like you can't even stand it yourself. That's how bad it will be. So it will have the types of smell you'll smell is literally like fish, rotten fish. It may be like eggs, rotten eggs, and really just heavy sweat. I mean like heavy sweat, like sweat, but 10 times worse. Okay. And I'm going to say this, a person is specifically targeting you this way. They do not want you to get married. They don't want you to get married. If you're already married, they're trying to get you guys to divorce. They don't want you guys to be intimate with your husband or your wife. Like they're trying to block your intimacy. They don't want anyone to be attracted to you to for you to get married. And oftentimes they don't even want you to have friends. They don't want you to they, they don't want you to have any opportunities at work. And these are the reasonings why they do these things. So when people specifically target you older wise, this is what they want. They don't want you to be happy. They don't want anyone around you. They want you to be alone. They want people to despise you. They want people to come around you and be like, oh, they don't want you to be invited to that work event. They don't want you to be invited to that conference. They don't want you to be invited on vacation. They don't even want you to be invited on that date. They don't want your husband or your wife to touch you. Like they're doing these things on purpose to make people become disgusted with you so they can deter themselves from you, okay? Job said himself, right, that... 
children despise and laugh when they see him and my closest friend look at me in disgust those that i love the most turned against me so again when people don't know what's going on with you and they don't know that a specific curse like this has been done to you they're gonna look at you like you're nasty you're gross you're lazy why don't you bathe why don't you this why don't you that not realizing you did not realizing you did you may have even went to the doctors over and over and over and over again you have done everything and they don't understand that this is a definitely a warfare this is definitely a curse it's definitely a spell that's being done to you they don't understand that right if you guys are going through this now we're going to talk about how these issues can be solved okay <laughs> so first things first let's talk about the whole manipulative tactic that they use to get you to not take care of yourself like the first thing i mentioned in this video okay you have to now start doing things from the inside out okay and i'm going to go into more de details about that later on but what i mean by it in this particular way this particular type of matter relating to manipulative witchcraft that they're doing to you is if you know that the reason why you're not taking care of your hair you're not showering properly you're not brushing your teeth properly you're not doing your laundry and all that is because you're stressed you're drained you're depressed the spirit of oppression what you have to do now is take the initiative and say to yourself, okay, I got to get my energy back. How do you do that? Make sure you're taking your, your, your multivitamins, okay? Make sure that it has a good amount of iron in it. Make sure that it has a good amount of magnesium. Some vitamins, it's hit and miss. So some of them will be like, they'll have everything else, but they'll be lacking magnesium. So you may have to get like a multivitamin and then get magnesium make sure you're also getting your l-theanine l-theanine is very good for energy as well and that's something that i take i take my magnesium with l-theanine at night and then i take my multi my multivitamin in the daytime okay again so i told you guys i am not going to gatekeep but these are the types of vitamins and nutrients that i take daily on a daily basis these are the brands that i use on a daily basis so in the morning i would take the geritol and i'll also take the probiotic which i'm actually out of but i'm going to show you the probiotics that i would take so it would be geritol and probiotics if you are a man you would take the geritol along with the men's probiotics the probiotics are really good it actually keeps your gut area very clean and it actually keeps your gut very very healthy and this actually will help eliminate any internal odor relating to your intestines your stomach area all of that okay another vitamin that i take is i take the magnesium at night along with the l-theanine okay this actually helps your brain this actually helps you sleep and this actually helps with your energy so you'll have better sleep at night but not only that but you'll be a little bit more energetic in the daytime so the amount of vitamins that i showed you this is what's going to keep you very balanced and keep you energized and remember what i tell you guys all the time if you are not you know keeping up with your vitamins and you have vitamin deficiency that will make whatever they're doing to you 10 times stronger because you're already deficient within your vitamins right but if they're trying to drain your energy and you're doing everything possible to keep your energy up it's almost like a balance it's like they're not going to get to you as much you get what i'm saying so you're going to make sure that you're keeping on top of your energy throughout the day and that's what's going to make things a lot easier for you for you to maintain and prioritize your hygiene and for you to actually be able to have the energy to take care of yourself that will help with your energy another thing that will help with your energy as well is getting up and going for walks okay and another thing that will help with your energy is doing a 24-hour dry fast or a three-day dry fast okay okay what people don't understand is a one day dry fast is equivalent to like a three-day water fast because the way how your body changes you know doing a three-day water fast is exactly how your body will change doing a one day dry fast so one day dry fast it's like resetting yourself resetting your spirit you guys will notice that whenever you're done doing a dry fast and then you actually finally start to eat again you'll notice that your energy is up okay matcha really helps in the morning also for energy um, make sure you have your orange juice, your vitamin C. Orange juice also helps in the morning for energy. So in this particular case, like I stated, when you know that your hygiene can be fixed, it's just literally about you doing things because you, you know, you're drained and everything like that. Start with taking care of your energy so you can get these things done properly. I also want you to remember that faith without works is dead. So you have to remember that if you are not doing the things that you're supposed to do to take care of your energy that is where you're going to lack to take care of your hygiene okay so i understand it's really hard i understand it's drained but you have to fight the good fight i'm telling you you have to fight 
I wake up every day and I fight and I take care of myself, take care of my hygiene, take care of everything. Even when they try to oppress me, even when they send spirits to drain me, I still make sure I take care of myself. I pray against these things. I fast against these things. And that is how I maintain my energy. I take my vitamins, etc. So it's, it's a multiple amount of things that you will have to do. And this is all about routine. It's all about routine and sticking with your routines. Because if you say, okay, I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray but you you finish fasting and praying and then you finally eat again you have a lot of energy for the, for the first three four days but then you get drained again why because you are not taking your multivitamins so i'm using it as an example of how multiple things will actually work for you if you don't only just stick to one thing and rely to one thing you may have to do multiple things okay so yes maintain your energy keep your energy up so you can spend extra time taking care of yourself and doing little daily routines that's going to continue to keep your hygiene top tier when the more energy you have the more time you're going to spend taking care of yourself okay so if you notice that you're not drained you're not tired you're going to definitely be brushing your teeth three times a day if not three times a day two times a day but you're going to be flossing you're going to be oil pulling you're going to be scrubbing your tongue you're going to be gargling you're going to be using your mouthwash you're going to notice that those routines are not going to feel like a marathon you're going to enjoy doing it and you're going to get it done because you have the energy to do it you're going to notice that when you take your showers whether it's two times a day or three times a day you're going to notice that you're literally scrubbing all places you're not just hurrying up to get out you're really taking care of yourself you're exfoliating you're doing everything that you need to do in order for you to continue maintaining healthy hygiene okay so again faith that works is dead and you will also have to do multiple things to make sure that you are staying on top of these things. I wanna explain something to you that a lot of people don't understand, okay? Have any of you guys ever realized that before you noticed, you know, your gifts or before you started like really operating through your gifts or before you start walking with God, you start understanding warfare and stuff, don't you guys notice that back in the day you may have had really good skin? Back in the day, you know, you may notice that your, your skin is not as sensitive. You had strong skin. You don't break out easy. Your hair don't fall out easy. You notice that your hygiene is top tier. But you notice that as soon as you started to, you know, walk wholeheartedly with God, as soon as you start to operate through your gifts, as soon as you start to receive more sensitivity in the spirit, you notice now that your physical body it's like extremely sensitive. You gotta be careful what you eat now. You gotta be careful what you put in your hair now. You gotta be careful what you put on your skin now because every little thing can affect your body, okay? You're very sensitive. And you know why that is? Because you are now sensitive in the spirit. If you are sensitive in the spirit, you have to understand that not only are you sensitive in the spirit, but now your physical body is sensitive. So just like things are changing spiritually for you, because you're seeing in the spirit, hearing in the spirit, whatever it is, you know, you're, you're more sensitive in the spirit, discernment's on point, you know what I mean? You, you can feel warfare, you can understand warfare, your physical body is affected by these things. That's why when you're afflicted in the spirit, you start sweating a lot in the physical. Or if you notice that certain things happen to you in the spirit, it's affecting you physically, okay? So that means if you are sensitive in the spirit, your body is sensitive, which means now you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta do things differently. That means that the routines that you had in the past, before you became spiritually sensitive, those routines are gonna have to change. Your face wash is gonna have to change. Your mouth wash is gonna have to change. You get what I'm saying? Like your body wash is gonna have to change. Your detergent's gonna have to change because now your physical body is sensitive because you are now experiencing sensitivity in the spirit. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about the type of fast that you're going to do to break any spiritual curse and any spiritual spell that is affecting your hygiene okay and here's the thing i can't tell you when to go into this fast this is going to be something that you have to take up with god and he's going to have to lead you into this fast however i can definitely tell you what to do and i can definitely tell you that this fast will definitely clear up everything that you're experiencing relating to physical odor, spiritual odor, a spirit spouse, spirit wife. If you're not going through anything relating to odor, you can still do this fast, but you don't have to you don't have to take the chlorophyll, which is a part of the fast. Okay? So I'm going to explain this. So what you're going to do first is you're going to go into a 3-day dry fast. 
A three day dry fast is the same fast that Esther did, no food, no water. Of course you have to do this when God leads you to do it, okay? So you, the whole fast is 10 days. The whole fast to clear away body odor, um, specific spirits, afflictions, to clear everything away that's affecting your body and odor and everything like that. It's a 10 day fast, but I'm gonna break it into pieces for you, okay? So the first three days are gonna be dry fast for three days. No food, no water, okay? And this is to break the afflictions. This is to break the spell. This is to break the curse. This is to break specific spirits, okay? To remove them from you. The, whatever they attach you to, whatever they attach your photo to, whatever they dirt they put on your name, whatever graveyard dirt they attach, you are gonna break this with the three-day dry fast, okay? After the three-day dry fast, you cleared away the spirit, the curse, and everything, so that's broken but you still have to get rid of what's lingering which means that remember they've already afflicted you with the smell they've already afflicted you with the scent okay they've already affected you infection wise in the spirit right so basically with the three-day dry fast you have broken the curse that would have kept this going consistently right so now you have to get rid of the lingering effects as in what was already done to you before you broke the curse before you broke the spell okay so you're going to do the three-day dry fast then you're gonna transition out of the dry fast into a water fast. And the water fast is gonna be for four days, okay? So you're gonna go from dry fast for three days and then you're gonna enter into a water fast. However, here's the thing. The four days you are, take, you are starting this water fast, you're also going to need liquid chlorophyll. Not the mint flavor, the unflavored kind. The, the best brand that I like is Chlorofresh. That's the brand that I use. Um, that's a really good brand actually that that chlorophyll is actually really good chlorophyll. Okay, so You're gonna take you're gonna drink water for four days Okay, and then you're also gonna take one of this liquid chlorophyll during the fast on those four days once a day three days dry fast you finish dry fasting for three days you enter a water fast now for four days during those four days you're taking liquid chlorophyll once a day in the morning and throughout the day you're drinking your water and then you're going to leave the four day water fast now and now you're going to enter a three day fruits and vegetables fast okay during the three day fruits and vegetables fast, no meat, you're gonna continue to take your liquid chlorophyll, right? And you're gonna continue to drink water, but you're also gonna eat fruits and vegetables. Not only that, but you have to also make sure that you have a jug or a pitch full of water and sliced cucumbers and lemons, okay? Because lemon is going to detox you. Cucumbers are also going to detox you. The cucumbers also help with what? Your pores. The pores that what sweat comes out of, okay? Now you're gonna drink your lemon and cucumber water during the three days when you're doing your um, fruits and vegetables fast, okay? So once you're finished that now, you can go back to your daily routines when it comes to like whatever you're eating, etc., etc. But here's the thing, continue to take your liquid chlorophyll okay, until it is finished, okay? But I'm telling you right now, if you do this fast for 10 days and you do it in these steps, okay? I'm telling you right now, you're going to see some miracles, okay? You're going to see miracles. Again, faith without works is dead, okay? So you wanna make sure that you are also participating and doing what you need to do. Of course, pray, of course, fast and everything like that. Cancel, rebuke, but also make sure that you are doing these routinely things. So I'm gonna read this scripture. This is Matthew 17, verse 21. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Again, fasting and prayer is what breaks strongholds so the stronghold is broken after the three-day fast okay now you're gonna go into a four-day water fast with liquid chlorophyll once a day to break whatever was lingering okay then you're gonna go into a three-day fruits and vegetables fast along with drinking lemon and cucumber water in order to continue detoxing while still taking the chlorophyll once a day and then after that you're going to continue to take the chlorophyll once a day until it's finished then you're going to go back to whatever food routine you want to go back to. However, those of you guys that are spiritually sensitive, you're going to have to change some routines, 
You're going to have to change some routines, which means that some of the things that you used to do, you're not going to be able to do anymore. If you notice that this is something that has been affecting you, spiritual odor, because of witchcraft attempts, and you've never experienced this in the past ever, but you notice that ever since you became spiritually sensitive, ever since you've been hearing and seeing in the spirit, ever since you've noticed about warfare, ever since these things, you notice that this has been affecting your hygiene and stuff. What you're going to do is you're going to complete this fast that I just mentioned. And then you're going to have to change your routines. You're going to have to change certain things, okay? So again, like I said in the beginning, we're cleansing yourself from the spiritual to the internal, now to the external. Do you get what I'm saying? So we've already done the spiritual, now we did the internal, and now we're doing the external to prevent anything from the external to affect you. When you cleanse the spiritual, which is the fast, and then you cleanse the eternal, which is the chlorophyll, you know, the detoxing, so now you have to cleanse the external as well, your physical, to prevent you from, from being affected because now your physical body is also very sensitive because of your spiritual body being sensitive. So remember, because we cle first cleansed the spiritual, went from cleansing the spiritual to cleansing the internal, right? And then cleansing the internal to now cleansing the external. How do you cleanse the external? You have to also change your routines, okay? And you have to also change your routines in order to prevent you from getting any infections because now you're noticing that your spiritual is not only sensitive, but now your physical body is sensitive because your spiritual body is sensitive as well, okay? I'm gonna give you a list of things that you can do to keep yourself fresh during warfare but also that you can start doing right after you finish this fast to maintain everything and continue to keep everything fresh. So the first things first is deodorants, okay? I can't tell you guys what brand deodorant to use because that is extremely up to you. However, I will say this, that using deodorant, but not only deodorant, but also using deodorant spray. I know it sounds like too much, but it actually works, especially when you're going through warfare and you start sweating. All you're going to smell is that baby powder scent. That's all you're going to smell. Or you're going to smell that flower scent. Or you're going to smell that mountain fresh scent. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's all you're going to smell. But what it is, it's just like double protection. You don't have to do that. It's something that I do and it really helps. It really works. And I always stay fresh. So um, basically what you would do, what I use is I use Dove. I like Dove. I use Dove deodorant and then I also use the Dove spray. And I spray that on top of the deodorant. And that keeps me fresh. And what you also want to do is you can keep a spray in your car. Do you want to spray it in your car? Keep a deodorant spray in your purse. It's just really good to keep a deodorant spray, especially when you're going through warfare. And you notice that when you are going through warfare, you're, you do tend to sweat more than usual. So it is good to keep a deodorant spray in your bag or in your you know, car or wherever, you, wherever you're going to keep you fresh throughout the day. Okay. This is a big one and not much people know this, but ladies and gents, you, if you're spiritually sensitive and you notice that this, this stuff has been affecting you in the physical, you will have to switch your favorite underwear, okay? So if you are someone that likes silk underwear or all that type of stuff, you're going to have to wear cotton underwears when you're going to have a busy day. If you know you're going to be outside, if you know you're going to be all about the house, if you know you're going through warfare, you're going to have to wear cotton underwear. Save the silk underwears, the other type of material, polyester material, all those material underwears. Save that for when you're going out. If you're going to go out to a date, if you're going to go out to a movie, if you're going to go out to an event, and you know that you're going to end up dressing up, save those types of underwears for days where you're going to dress up. Why is that? Because when you're dressing up to go somewhere that's important, Chances are when you go, you dress up to go to that event, you're not staying at that event or staying at that important place for more than like three, four hours, maybe five hours. And then as soon as you come home, you're showering and going to bed, right? But for an everyday routine underwear, you have to make sure that it's cotton because cotton is very breathable. And the thing about it is when you start wearing like silk and all the other materials, it collects a lot more sweat. It does. It collects a lot more sweat because it's not breathable. Cotton underwear is breathable. So get any type of cotton underwear. So any type of cotton underwear, cotton boxers, let that be your everyday type of boxers or underwear. Let it be cotton material. But where are the other materials when you're going somewhere? Like for occasions, if you're going somewhere, you have to dress up because you're not going to be wearing it for a very long time, right? And you have to understand that when you're going through warfare and you are sensitive in the spirit, you're feeling all the time, you're hearing all the time, you're seeing all the time. Chances are there's going to be times where you're going to end up getting nervous. You may end up sweating. So you're, you have to fight certain spirits, rebuke, denounce. 
that alone will cause a lot of stress and that alone will make you sweat. And you want to make sure that you are wearing underwear that is not collecting sweat. That is what's going to prevent odor from building up as well. Okay. Another thing that you're going to do to keep yourself fresh is you're going to use liquid cast off soap before you use your preferable soap. Okay. And I know it may sound like too much. You know, you may be like, oh, you're so extra. But let me tell you something. Let me, um, let me tell you something. Okay. Listen. When you are someone that is sensitive in the spirit and you have to go through so much warfare because of it, you have to understand that you have to go 10 times harder than the average human being when it comes to protecting yourself, when it comes to routines, when it comes to certain things. A person that is normal, that does not go through warfare, they can get up and brush their teeth, they can comb their hair, they can do their routines and leave normally. A person that's going through warfare, it's so hard for them to get up out of bed, they have to fight certain spirits, they have to fight witchcraft, etc., which means you have to go 10 times harder to prevent certain things from affecting you, right? So when you are fighting off spiritual warfare and odors and all of that stuff, you are going to make have to make sure that you are deep cleaning your skin, deep cleaning your whole body, exfoliating, okay? And one of the soaps that is good that I recommend that I use, is that I use Dr. Bronner's Liquid Cast Off Soap. I use three different kinds, okay? I use the unscented one. Okay, and I use the eucalyptus one, and I also use the tea tree one. And the reason being for this is eucalyptus and tea tree are very good for cleansing pores, and they're very good for odor. I know some people like the peppermint one, and I know a lot of people say they like the peppermint one and all that stuff. The pe I've tried every one, the peppermint one, the citrus one, all that. Those, I don't really think those are good for odors, the best ones for odors is the unscented one, the eucalyptus, and the tea tree. The reason why I say the unscented Dr. Bronner's is because that is the one you're going to use on your private area, okay? That is the one that's going to clean your private area thoroughly, okay? And then you use the, um, the tea tree oil or use the eucalyptus and you exfoliate your body with that. I just recently discovered a new favorite. This is the liquid castile soap and this is the rose scent, okay? And this is the red one. Before I would see it around, but I never really bought it. I usually just stuck to the ones that I usually stick to, but I tried this one and I really love the way it smells on my skin. And it's also very safe to use around the private areas as well. So I'm not gonna gatekeep this. This is a very actually good scent, okay? After you exfoliate your body, What's gonna happen is you can now use your preferable body wash. So whatever body wash you like to use that's scented, that's good, that smells good, use that after you use the the, the, the cast off soap because the cast off soap is pure ingredients. It definitely, it really detoxes your body, right? And it really cleans your body. But at the same time, because it, because it cleans your body so well, your skin is going to be very dry. <laughs> very dry because it's literally stripping off every single dirt every oil, everything on your body, you are going to be like squeaky clean. Okay. And because you're going to be squeaky clean, you want to, you obviously want to have some moisturizer and all of that. So that's why I say use the cast off soap first. And then after you use a cast off soap, go in with your favorite body wash, moisturizing body wash. I have my own brand of body wash. So I use my own brand after I use the cast off soap. You also want to make sure that you guys are getting sugar scrub. Oh my goodness. Coconut sugar scrub. They have these for men and they have these for women. This is another good way of how to exfoliate your body, but to also restore moisture on your skin. So after you use the body wash, you would use the sugar scrub. This is my specific brand that I use. And this actually has hints of oud, some musk, even some sandalwood. So this gives you like a very earthy type of smell right after you shower. So imagine now scrubbing your skin extremely clean with the cast oil soap, you're going over with a body wash that is meant to moisture. And then on top of that, you're going in with a scrub and then you're finishing off with amazing body butter that also has a hint of oud and sandalwood and it just smells so good. Of course, you can use your lotion of choice, your body butter of choice, your sugar scrub of choice this is my brand and this is what I prefer to use. But all all this combined together your skin is going to smell so amazing so even if you sweat let me tell you something you won't even be able to smell that sweat like you're gonna be smelling like oud and sandalwood all night or all day okay another tip I'm gonna tell you guys is the loofahs toss the loofahs out do listen toss the loofahs out 
the loofahs don't do anything for your body. All it does is it, it's like it, it, play, it, plays, it plays games with, with the body dirt. That's all it does. It just moves it from one area to the other, but it doesn't completely lift it off. It lifts off like the top layer of dirt and then leaves like a lot. It doesn't even clean your pores thoroughly. Loofah, it spreads bacteria. You may want to get rid of the loofah. The best type of way to exfoliate your body is a washcloth or exfoliating gloves. My favorite is exfoliating gloves. Washcloth, it's good, it's okay. I like exfoliating gloves. Some people say it hurts, but here's the thing with exfoliating gloves, you can put as much pressure as you're okay with when exfoliating. If you don't like to put too much pressure, then don't. If you like light pressure, then fine. But those gloves, those gloves are going to lift every single piece of dirt off that body. Best believe that, okay? <laughs> that will also remove dead skin off your body. Dead skin can also cause odor. Do you know that? Dead skin can clog pores and that can cause sweat buildup, that can cause odor. Exfoliating your body every single day with exfoliating gloves definitely does the job, okay? However, pointers. Every time you take a shower and you use your exfoliating gloves or your washcloth, you have to wash your exfoliating gloves and you have to wash your washcloth before you leave. Yes, you scrubbed your body with the soap, but you still have to wash that exfoliating gloves. You still have to wash those gloves and you still have to wash the washcloth before you leave. What can happen is it can build up bacteria. Every time you're finished showering with your exfoliating gloves or your washcloth, you wanna wash it with your hands, okay? However, you want to actually machine wash it every three to four days, okay? Yes, I know it's a lot, but it's good. The other way you can do it as well is you can wash your exfoliating gloves every single time you use it, and then every three days you replace it if you have new ones, and you just put the old ones inside the laundry basket, okay? You wanna put the gloves in a specific separate bag or a separate laundry basket for you to wash. What I do is I have a basket in my bathroom and I have a bunch of washcloths in it and I just change the washcloths like every two days, every three days. However, the washcloths I don't use to shower, I use exfoliating gloves to shower and I have about like three or four pairs. So when one is dirty, the other one is clean. When the other one's dirty, the other one's clean. So I always make sure that I go in between and you don't wanna keep your exfoliating gloves for longer than a month. You wanna buy new ones every month. And they're actually very cheap. They're like $2, a dollar at a dollar store. Okay, they're very cheap or a drugstore. Okay, or Amazon, okay? You have to remember something because if you don't do this, you are going to have a washcloth that is building up with bacteria. Gloves are building up with bacteria, even if you wash it every day. You're washing it every day to prevent it from building up, but if you use it all the time, it will eventually build up, okay? So that's why it's good to always change the gloves or put them in the washer and dryer and have another pair while that's washing, okay? Um, another thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you change your towel every three days. Do not use your towel for more than two days or three days. Three days if you have to, max. Towel does collect bacteria. The more you start to shower and then you put that bacteria back on your skin, believe me, you are gonna be, you're gonna have infections, you're gonna be smelling sometimes because towels collect bacteria and the more bacteria it collects, the more the towel is gonna have an odor and the more you're gonna use that towel on your body, you're just putting bacteria back on your body and because your body is sensitive, because you have a sensitive spirit, your body is sensitive, okay? you are gonna you are gonna you may go through infections all over again you may go through infections all over again okay and you want to prevent that okay another another pointer okay is when you're drying your important body parts your private areas right you may you can dry your whole body but have a separate um have a separate hand towel for that particular area or use tissue or paper towel for that particular area. Do not use the same towel that you use all over your body to dry your armpits, dry behind your hair, dry all that stuff, and dry your private area. That can cause infection as well. Some people are like, oh my gosh, why would I do have to do all that? I just showered. Because sometimes you may miss certain places in the shower. You may shower and exfoliate everywhere, everywhere is clean, but there may be that one part of your body that you did not get. You, It's just common sense, right? It's just like I said, some of these things are like common sense things, but you have to understand that these little routine, these little changes in your routine will actually help prevent you from having any type of odor and it will actually prevent you from getting extra infections, okay? Change your towels every two to three days and, and here's what you can do. 
I understand some people have one towel and stuff. I tell people buy at least four or five towels. One for four, what, buy four or five towels. What I did is I bought towels for every day of the week. <laughs> of course, I don't use new towels every day. I use them every two days, right? But if you have a towel for every day of the week, when a bunch are dirty, you're still gonna have more. You get what I'm saying? And by the time you need new towels, by the time laundry day comes, you will still have towels even up until laundry day. You'll still have towels. You'll never have to worry about running out of towels. Do the same thing with washcloths and hand towels. You can buy one for each day. You don't have to use them every day, but you will have them so you can switch every two days and you're never gonna run out, okay? Um, exfoliating gloves, make sure you have at least three to five pairs. They're a dollar at a store, they're a dollar at Amazon, two dollars on Amazon. Have five different pairs, you get what I'm saying? So another thing I wanna say to you is wash your towels separately from your clothes. Do not wash your towels and your clothes together. You will understand when I get to the other part of this video when I talk about washing your underwears and stuff, but let me tell you something. Your clothes carry a lot of bacteria, especially when you go out in public. You're sitting on benches, you're sitting in public places. Like Clothes carry bacteria. I don't care how much you wash those clothes. You can wash those clothes all you want. Clothes carry bacteria. And some bacteria, they stay, they linger. And if you're washing the towel that you're putting on your, your bare body that you're using to wipe your private area, that's why I say don't use the same towel to wipe your private area, but imagine a person using a towel to dry their whole body, wipe their private area, and they're also using putting this towel to wash with their clothes that they have outside. I'm telling you right now, that towel is not as clean as you think it is. Don't take offense to this. Again, we are all adults here. I'm just giving you guys some pointers and things that actually work and actually help. Again, like I said, when you are sensitive in the spirit and you are fighting specific things and you notice that it's affecting you physically and it's affecting you more than it would affect the average human being, you can't do things like everybody else does. You have to understand that. You can't do things like you used to do. Your routines are going to have to change because now you have to be more on your P's and Q's because you know that you're targeted by specific people you're targeted by specific spirits you just being on this walk walking with god alone you are a target because of that the enemy is going to always try to bring you down make you insecure make you feel insecure make things happen to you so you want to make sure that you're doing the most okay you're doing the most okay <laughs> because you have to okay you have to so do not wash your towels with your clothes what i do but my laundry days, I have all the towels together. They wash together. The washcloths wash together. And exfoliating gloves wash together. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, listen, don't get upset at me, but let me tell you something. You, because you have to change your routines, you're going to have to wash your underwears separately as well. So what you're going to have to do, okay, this is something we do, in, we, this is something that we do in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, most people, I don't know if it's like a, a worldwide thing, but most people in the Caribbean wash their underwears while they're showering, okay? And then they, they still wash it in the washer and dryer, but they wash it while they're showering. So what you want to do is you want to wash your, every time you're going to go shower, wash that underwear, wash that boxers, okay? Wash it. Leave it to dry. When it's dried, you don't throw it in the same laundry bin as your clothes. Mm -mm. You don't do that. Your clothes... Has, has bacteria juice, okay? When you wash your clothes in the washer and that water is collecting with your clothes and the soap, you know how much germs is mixed in that? Imagine washing your underwear in the same pile of laundry that you're, that you're washing your pants, your shirt, and you are just outside sitting on a public bench, you are just sitting on a public bus, you are just sitting in a cafeteria, and you're washing all of that with your underwear with your face cloth, with your towel. I'm telling you, you can't do things the same when you are on this journey because you're extra sensitive and your physical body is extra sensitive. You have to do the most, <laughs> okay? So wash your underwears, wash your boxers when you shower, okay? Hang it up to dry. And instead of putting it in the same laundry bin as your clothes, get one of these little pouch bags from Amazon, okay? 
in these pouch bags, you can put the underwear, the boxers in these pouch bags and you can zip it up so it's not mixed with your laundry. And then when it's time for you to do your laundry and you wash your clothes, you can wash your underwears separately. Okay, so if you're going to a public laundromat and you're going to wash your underwear separately from your clothes, you may want to wipe that washer and dryer out with some Dettol or with some type of like, you know, Pine Sol or some type of cleaner, Lysol. Use a J-cloth and wipe it out with some sort of all-purpose cleaner before you actually put your underwears and stuff in it. Okay, so you want to disinfect the washer before you use it if you're using a public washer. Yes, it's common sense, it's logical, but remember, but remember some people don't know this. Some people don't understand this, right? And again, like I said, like when you go through things more than the average person, you have to start doing more than the average person just to stay balanced, just for everything to be normal, okay? So again, if you wash your underwears with the rest of your clothes, all of that juice with those germs from the, 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 the water and washing the clothes, your underwear is going to be mixed in that. And this is why, ladies, sometimes you'll put on the underwear and you'll notice you're getting an infection. You're not having sex. You're not doing anything wrong. You're starting. If it's not a spirit affecting you, this is also the, your, sen your skin is more sensitive now because of warfare, which means that you have to start doing things differently. You have to be more gentle with yourself. Okay, so yes, wash your underwears and stuff separately. Okay, so when you are washing your underwear, okay? And when you are washing your underwear and when you are washing your towels and your washcloths, I'm gonna tell you some pointers. First with the towels. When you're washing your towels, remember something. You cannot put fabric softener on your towels. That will make your towels not dry your body properly. You ever notice that you dry yourself with a towel and then all of a sudden your, your skin is still kind of wet even when you dry yourself with a towel because there's fabric softener on that towel. It changes the texture of the towel. When you're washing your towel, you want to make sure that you use the OxyClean. You want to make sure you use, if you're using bleach, if it's a white towel and you're using bleach, your Clorox bleach, that's fine. And your detergent. Your detergent should be, um, for your towels, it, should, it could be scented or non-scented, but just make sure it's pure detergent. It's not anything that is toxic, okay? So when you wash your towels, no fabric softener, okay? No fabric softener, okay? and pure detergent, okay? When you're washing your underwears, okay? You cannot use fabric softener, okay? You cannot use OxyClean. The only thing you can do when you wash your underwears is you use unscented detergent. That's it. No Lysol, no OxyClean, no fabric softener, because let me tell you something, fabric softener, anything that has scents, that will cause you to have an infection. Again, like I said, if you're noticing that your body's changing, ever since you've been on this walk, your body's changing. You're more sensitive to certain things. You're more sensitive to certain foods. You can't eat everything anymore. You can't shower with the same body washes anymore. You can't use the same deodorants anymore. It's going to be the same thing with your laundry, your laundry detergent, okay? So no scented detergent, no OxyClean, no fabric softener when washing your underwears, only detergent. That's it. Only unscented detergent. That's it. When it comes to your clothes, you can use scented detergent. You can use OxyClean. You can even use Lysol disinfected. There's like a Lysol for the laundry. I use that as well. Um, so all my clothes, what I use, because the clothes are the most dirtiest because it has the most bacteria, what I use is scented detergent, but it's a pure detergent. I use seventh generation's detergent. I use a Lysol disinfected laundry liquid. I also use the OxyClean specifically for odor. Okay, so this helps remove odor from clothes. Okay, so if there's any sweat or anything, this helps remove the odor. And then I use my favorite fabric softener. So on the clothes, it's okay to use all these things because it's your clothes. But when it, well, when it comes to your underwear, do not use anything scented or do not use any of these stuff other than the unscented detergent, okay? Same with your towels. Your towels, OxyClean for odor is okay. A little bit of Clorox if it's white towels. Um, and scented or unscented detergent, but just no fabric softener, okay? This will help you guys have better skin, okay? No breaking out on your skin, but it will also prevent you from receiving infections. I also wanted to add about the best way to stay fresh in public, guys, for women and men is always bring with you wet wipes, okay? Always bring with you 
cotton wet wipes okay um i would not recommend getting wet wipes the brand i would recommend more getting like a toilet paper brand that also has wet wipes but you don't want to also just use the wet wipes because you don't want to leave your butt or that private area wet because that can also collect odor as well you want to make sure that when you are using the wet wipes you are cleaning that area with the wet wipes and then you are going over that area with with dry toilet paper to dry the area as well that is another way how to eliminate odor especially if you're outside all day or if you're at work keep this in your purse or keep this in your book bag or keep this in your briefcase and this is another way how to prevent odor and to keep you smelling fresh again i mentioned also bringing the deodorant spray with you everywhere that is another way to keep yourself fresh another way how i keep myself fresh and you can do this as well is you can carry around um, little samples of perfume sprays you could either buy small little samples of perfume or you can go on Amazon and buy little small little small perfume transferable sprays where you can transfer perfume from your bigger bottles into your smaller bottles and carry it around with you sometimes what I do is when I go to the store and I also buy specific perfumes I always ask them to give me samples of other perfumes and I always save the samples for when I'm going out in public and I put the samples in my purse. What I recommend that is really good not only for men but also for women is I always recommend that you guys try Arabic oil. Um, there's different types of scents. There's oud, there's oud rose, there's musk, there's sandalwood. There's different types of Arabic oils that you can get. I usually get the big bottles but I also get the little small sample bottles that I can bring with me in public and I'm telling you the oils actually make a difference. Like literally you can smell the oil a mile away, okay? <laughs> I love the Arabic oils so much. I even bought my future husband an Arabic oil. Actually, I bought him a bunch, but I'm going to show you one of the examples that I bought. It's just good to travel with them. It's just good to have them because, you know, they're actually better than sprays and they last a lot longer than sprays. And it's just good to put them behind your ears, put them on the wrists of your hands, a little bit on your neck. I'm telling you, you will smell good all day long. Sometimes it's good to layer it as well, where you put the Arabic oils on and then you spray some perfume or cologne, depending on your preference. This just makes sure that you smell good all day long. So it's really good to get little Arabic oil samples and Arabic oils that you can bring around with you as well. I also want to mention something to you about going to bed. I don't know about you guys, but I when I shower at night and I go to bed, I always make sure I put on oils and I always make sure sometimes that I do spray on some body sprays or perfume, depending on what I feel like. And the reason being for this is because after you take a shower and you, you know, do everything that I told you in this video, when you put a little bit of um, Arabic oil on or a little bit of body spray when going to bed, it also helps with keeping fragrance on your sheets. So if you do go through like a traumatic dream or you're going through warfare in the nighttime and you're noticing that you're sweating, your sweat is literally going to smell like Arabic oil. Your sweat's literally going to smell like, you know, the sprays that you're spraying on or the perfume. So I know some people don't spray perfumes on to go to bed or wear oils to go to bed, but I specifically do. It actually helps with my scent and it actually makes my sheets smell really good. Even when I get really hot at night, my sheets are smelling amazing and I know a fact I know for a fact this works because um, there's been times where I would end up in the spirit and I would see people in the spirit and they're like, oh my gosh, you smell so good. And I would wake up like, wow, I can't believe people can actually smell this in the spiritual realm. Again, because our sense in the spirit are very, very, very strong. And I just want to let you know this. So one of the most important things that I want to discuss with you guys is presenting yourself in the spiritual realm appropriately. Okay. Do you guys know that whatever you wear going to bed, however you smell going to bed, however you look going to bed, that is also how you may appear in the spiritual realm and how you may even appear in the prophetic dreams, okay? So, for instance, if you go to bed naked, you may end up appearing in the spiritual realm or in the dream naked. If you go to bed smelling bad, you will start to smell bad in the spirit. As in, if you don't shower, you say, I'm going to skip a shower, I'm not going to brush my teeth. 
I want you guys to understand something. If you do that and you go to bed, you will appear in the spirit that way. So when you are talking to someone in the spirit, you are going to smell the exact same way you smell going to bed. You are going to look the exact same way you look going to bed. If you're going to bed naked, you're going to end up naked in the spiritual realm. That doesn't happen all the time, but it happens quite some time. And this is another reason why it's so important to have proper hygiene even while going to bed, because how you smell in your bed is how you're going to also smell in the spirit. And if you are dealing with other people who are extremely gifted, who have the gift to smell, who have the gift to see, who have the gift to hear, and you're having interactions in the spiritual realm with other people, especially if you're a prophetic or you are an anointed and you have that access as a seer, you have that access as an anointed in the spirit, you are definitely going to have encounters with other children of God and other people. And if you are going to bed smelling funky, you're going to smell funky in the spiritual realm. I know many of you guys have experienced this where you have been doing a dry fast and you have went to bed. And in the spiritual realm, you may notice that you're in the spirit. You're aware that you're in the spirit. You're interacting with people. You're talking to people. But you're noticing that the way how your breath smells during that dry fast is exactly how your breath smells in the spirit. And then you're very self-conscious in the spirit because you're like, oh my gosh, I'm doing a dry fast. So this is for those who are extremely aware, who are extremely gifted and they're extremely aware when they're in the spirit, right? You may be so aware of this, be like, oh man, I smell weird because I'm doing a dry fast. You may be holding your mouth in the spirit, trying not to talk to people. But do you see how, because you're so aware of that during a dry fast, that is exactly how it also is relating to your body odor, related to your appearance when you go to bed. You never know how you're going to show up in the spiritual realm. You never know how you're going to show up in the dream. So I always tell people, make sure that when you are going to bed, you are wearing something appropriate to bed, especially if you're not married, especially if you're single, wear something appropriate to bed. Because if you end up going to bed naked or in an underwear and bra, you may end up appearing that way in the spirit not only that but that is another way of how a spiritual spouse can be attracted to you if you are not delivered and you are unaware that there is someone doing a witchcraft curse or ritual curse towards you if you're not aware of this and you won't be prepared if you are going to bed naked or you are going to bed you know, um, dressed a certain type of way. Right. So I just want to let you guys know this. I understand it's like, well, I'm in the cover of my own home. I should be able to go to bed the way I want to go to bed. I should be, should be able to, you know, if I, if I want to skip a shower, I can skip a shower. If I don't want to brush my teeth, I don't have to brush my teeth, but you guys have to understand something when you are gifted and when you have access to the, to the hidden realms and the spiritual realms, you have to understand that just how you take care of yourself before you go outside in public, this is the same way you have to take care of yourself before you enter the spiritual realm. Because I'm telling you right now, a lot of us, we have the gift to smell, we have the gift to see, and sometimes we'll have encounters with people in the spiritual realm, and we know that they went to bed without showering. We know they went to bed without brushing their teeth. We know when they're on a dry fast. Why is that? Because we can smell in the spirit. And when we wake up, we are physically aware of what we smelled in the spirit. There's also been moments and times where you can be laying in your bed and you can smell, you can be thinking about someone, you'll have somebody in your spirit, you're thinking about them, and then you can literally smell their clone, you can smell their scent. There's plenty of times where I would wear specific fragrances to bed, like I would wear my, my Arabian oil to bed because that's one of my routines, which Arabian oil. And I've had encounters in the spiritual realm with, with other people that said, oh my gosh, you smell so good, what are you wearing? And I, and I would wake up and notice like, wow, they actually can smell me while I'm in the spiritual realm, right? So that's why I tell you guys, it's also very important to make sure that you're taking care of your hygiene before you go to bed because you never know how you're going to appear in the spirit, okay? Also one of the main things that happens with the spiritual warfare when they target your specific area Again, you, there will be specific smells that come from these specific private areas. And you may be like, this never happened to you before. You're not intimate with anybody. You're celibate and all of that. You may go to the doctors. They can't find anything. Again, the best way to clear this away is, like I told you guys earlier in this video, a three-day dry fast. And leave that three-day dry fast. Go into a four-day water fast. During that four-day water fast, one tablespoon of liquid chlorophyll during those four days, even after. Okay, then you're gonna go three days into a fruits and veggie fast. After you do this fast, change your routines, everything that I discussed, right? All right make sure you're drinking your lemon and cucumber water because that's gonna clear it, that's gonna detox your insides, detox your body, okay? That will also clear away the BV. So that alone will clear away the BV. But another thing I wanna tell you, 
Men, you may end up carrying BV as well, but you may not know you have it because it's not noticeable. Whereas for a female, it's very noticeable. And spiritual warfare can cause you to have that. Like I said, you may have a fishy smell or an eggy smell. You definitely want to get into the fast and get rid of that, okay? Definitely, sometimes it's them targeting you, like I said before. Sometimes it's, not, it's them targeting you because they don't want you to get married. They don't want you to be intimate with your partner if you're already married. They're trying to prevent you from having, you know, a love life, having marriage or, or having happy life, right? So... You want to make sure you get these things cleared away and i already told you how to do that but here's a, here's the thing if you are a man and you are noticing that you have this bv the best way to clear it is obviously the fast like i explained to you so you would do that fast but another thing that she would do is yes you would take your once a day men's probiotics which is going to help you know regulate your ph balance and it's also going to help with your gut area bv is very common in women men don't usually understand that they can carry it as well and there's a lot of options for women like suppositories and stuff but there's not really a lot of options for men so the option for men that really works to clear any fungi infection that you may have any yeast infection that you may have in your body this is actually called kinoco platinum 750 ahcc and this this will actually help kill the bacteria and renew new blood cells, which will actually help clear the VV, okay? Yes, women can take this as well, but there's a lot more suppository options for women. But if you are a man and you are noticing that you are, you know, being affected by BV because of the spiritual wife that was sent to you, you want to make sure that you are taking the AHCC every single day. This is going to definitely help you, okay? This, this AHCC actually helps with um, STDs, yeast infections, bacterial infections. It helps with a lot of things and it actually strengthens your immune system, okay? Now for the ladies. Faith without works is dead, okay? So you can do the fast, but if it's, some, if it's something that's urgent, you're like, I've had this problem for so long, I do have something I can tell you that helps for the females, okay? There is something called boric acid and I know that most of you guys may have already tried it or the doctor may have given it to you, but you're like, oh my gosh, it doesn't work. I know there's a lot of brands out there that with boric acid and not all the brands are good. And sometimes what a doctor gives you is not good, right? There is a specific brand that is really good for those who are going through this, ladies, if you're going through this. And the brand is called Seraflora Boric Acid. It's on Amazon. That, when I say I promise you, that stuff really works, okay? That stuff works. Of course, the fasting and all that, that's going to help. But like I said, if you're if you're literally like, man, I want to do the fast, but I have to prep for it, but I still have this issue and I can't get rid of it. And it's been here for a long time. You can literally do this in the meantime before you do your fast. OK, like you could even use this for like three, four days and then go into your fast. And this actually works so well to the point where you may only use it two or three times and you won't even need to use it anymore. So you're going to have leftovers and it's going to be there just sitting there for a very long time even i always recommend ladies that you just order it just to have it around i have it around just in case right but it does expire every two years so keep that in mind as well but it's just good to have it right so this is like basically like a quick way to just a head start to clear it away before you enter your fast okay to because the fast is mainly to break what's causing it but it's also to break what's lingering and as to also prevent it from coming back. But this can be like a head start before you enter your fast. But this, I can tell you, this definitely works. I remember a woman contacted me, I think it was like four years ago. And, you know, this is when I started teaching about spiritual warfare and I started talking about these things. And I didn't mention in my videos back then specific things relating to like odor. and stuff, But I didn't go into details like this video, right? And she contacted me and said that she's been having this problem. And I told her it was it was witchcraft. Someone was targeting her in that way. And she was saying how this was preventing her from meeting up with the person that God wanted her to be with because she was insecure about this scent. And she did not want it because the scent was so strong. She said she could smell it even outside her clothes. And she didn't want to be around anybody. Similar, similar to what Job was saying, right, where he was smelling bad and nobody wanted to be around him. She was going through this. She said she, was, she had this for, for a long time and she couldn't get rid of it. I remember um, when I had this because I, I was fighting the same type of warfare years ago as well. And I, nothing was working for me. And I went to the doctors and I'm celibate. And I'm like, what's going on? So years ago, I was fighting this warfare. And I realized that it was a woman that was doing it to me. It was actually an ex, not my ex, but someone else's ex that was doing it to me. And I kept seeing her in the dream doing it. And God was showing me that she was targeting me. And she was targeting my scent and everything like that. 
And I remember, I'm like, I don't know how to get rid of it. I went to the doctor and everything. And like I said, this was years ago. And I remember I saw this, this online. I saw the boric acid, the seriflora boric acid online. I remember I tried it for one day and it, it was gone. Never came back after that. <laughs> never came back after that, right? So because it never came back after that, I'm like, okay, I had a full bottle still. And I remember talking to the girl um, through email and I told her she didn't believe it was going to work for her because she's like, oh, I tried everything. I don't think this is going to work for me. I'm like, but have you tried this brand? She's like, no. I'm like, just try it. You know, she tried it. She emailed me and said she only used it for two days and it was completely gone. Right. So, again, there are other things that we can do, OK, to help ourselves in this case. But also, I tell you guys all the time, fasting is the most important thing. And that's why I said you can still do this, but make sure that you're still adding in fasting because you want to break the spirit that was sent to cause this in the first place. You want to make sure there's nothing lingering, nothing that's connected to you, nothing attached to you. You want to make sure that everything is cleared away. So I would just do everything. Okay. I would just do everything. If you are a male and you, and you have this and you're going through this, do the fast, do the thing what I told you to do with the fast, the chlorophyll and everything. Do the fast. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the stinky breath. Let's talk about the stinky breath. Cause let me tell you something. I already explained to you guys in this video how they can manipulate you into not taking care of yourself, but you also have to understand that there's certain spirits, there's certain things that they can do, specific witchcraft attempts that, where they can target specific areas like your breath, your armpits, all that, right? You have to also take the responsibility to do specific routines, okay? And I'm gonna tell you something, just brushing your teeth, rinsing your mouth out is not gonna cut it. It's like I said, when you are going through these things and you are fighting spirits, you have to do the most. You have to do more than the average person because you, your, your life is not normal, okay? You have to do the most so you can continue to smell fresh, feel fresh. You can fight the good fight smelling good, okay? So again, perfume ain't gonna cut it. You gotta cleanse the internal. Mouthwash ain't gonna cut it. You gotta cleanse the internal. How are you gonna do that? First, cleansing yourself spiritually, the three-day dry fast. Secondly, now you cleanse yourself spiritually. Now you can cleanse the eternal four day water fast with chlorophyll once a day for four days. Okay. Now you're going to leave that, go into um, a three day fruits and vegetables fast, continue the chlorophyll along with detoxing with cucumber and lemon water. Okay. And after that, I'm telling you, your breath won't smell good, but continue on with the chlorophyll. Do not stop with the chlorophyll. Continue the chlorophyll until it's finished. Okay. But however, there are specific things you can do now for the physical. Since we cleared the spiritual, the internal, now the physical, okay? Brushing your teeth, rinsing out your mouth, ain't going to cut it. You're going to have to do more than that. Not only are you going to, I recommend, I can't tell everybody what to do, but electric toothbrushes are good. If you can afford, if you can afford to get one, I get also want to mention that, you know, it's very good to get um, toothbrush covers as well. The reason why I like to use the spin brushes is because they're very affordable one. And when you buy the new heads, the new brush heads for the spin brushes, they come in two in a pack. However, sometimes you can actually find a new spin brush that is on sale, which is actually a lot cheaper than buying the new brush heads. So that means that you may just have to buy a whole new spin brush in general. But if it's not on sale, it's a lot cheaper to get the two brush heads in one package, okay? Two brush covers are important. It, it helps prevent bacteria from getting on the two brushes. These are also very good for traveling, okay? I do like to use Arm & Hammer toothpaste. However, the Lord recently showed me a vision of this Colgate charcoal, which is something that I did use in the past and then I switched to Arm & Hammer, but he showed me Colgate charcoal again in my vision to let me know that he wanted me to switch back to go to Colgate charcoal. So I just wanted to share that if you guys are trying to figure out which toothpaste you should get, this is something that I recommend. Okay. There's electric toothbrushes that are very affordable at Walmart. Okay. I use a spin brush. It works really good. What I like about it is I can change the heads of it. You know, you're supposed to change your toothbrush basically once every, every month. Do you know that you're supposed to change your toothbrush once a month? You're not supposed to have a toothbrush, the same toothbrush that you're using for six months, eight months, three No, you're supposed to change your toothbrush once a month, okay? Once a month, okay? So what I like about the spin brush is I can take off the head. I can take off the toothbrush part and I can throw it away. I still have the spin, I still have the toothbrush, but I don't have the bristles. I can take off the bristles, toss them out and buy new ones, okay? So that's why I like the spin brush.
you, I change my, my bristles like once a month, literally. You have to, bacteria, okay? And you want to make sure that you are cleansing properly, okay? Listen, if you cannot change your toothbrush once a month, peroxide make sure that once a month you are dipping your toothbrush bristles in peroxide and you leave it in there you're going to see how much germs come out of those bristles this is why i say it's important to change your bristles but if you can't put get a cup of peroxide put that toothbrush in there and watch how the peroxide is going to start bubbling with all those germs okay so that's another thing that you can do brushing your teeth what i use is i use arm and hammer um toothpaste I like Arm & Hammer because baking soda is very good for odors. Not only that, but baking soda is also good for whitening, okay? So what is oil pulling? Oil pulling is a method that's been used for years, for centuries. What oil pulling actually does is it actually pulls anything in between the gums and your teeth, anything in between the gums that's hiding, it pulls it down. Whether it's plaque, whether it's whatever is hiding in their food, it will pull it down. It's like, I can't explain it, but it works, okay? So, so what you're going to do is after you brush your teeth, then you're going to floss. After you floss, flossing is very important. Flossing is very important. Make sure you floss every single tooth, okay? Floss every single place, every single area. After you brush and you floss, you're going to oil pull. The oil pull is going to pull whatever is hiding in between the gums out, okay? You can use coconut to oil pull, okay? Coconut really helps. Or you can use what I use. I use Nuruganda, and I got this from Amazon, and it really, really helps. I really like this. So I use this or coconut. What you're going to do is you're going to put the oil in your mouth, and you're going to swish it around for a good five to ten minutes, okay? What I do when I do this is while I'm swishling it around, I end up, you know, washing my face and everything like that while I'm doing it, right? Then after you do that, the oil pull, you're going to use a tongue scraper. You can get a tongue scraper from Amazon. I promise you guys, this is so much more healthier than using your toothbrush to scrape your tongue. And this has more of an effect as in you are getting every single thing off that tongue, okay? A tongue scraper is, listen, life-changing, okay? After you tongue scrape, then you're going to use, you don't have to use this, but I use it, but you don't have to. Then you're going to use a water flosser. The reason why I like the water floss, and you're like, okay, so I just, you're like, so why would you tell us to floss if you're using a water flosser? Because I use both. I use both. Sometimes you miss places. Sometimes you may miss something. You know what I mean? The water flosser is like a pressure flosser. As in like the water pressure goes between your teeth and it literally cleans between your teeth, okay? And it also can clean in between your gum, gum lines as well, okay? Like you know how the dentist will use that like, I forget what it's called, that prickly thing and clean between your gum lines. The water flosser actually does that and there's a lot of pressure and then there's different volumes of pressure. You don't have to use the highest volume, but you can use what, what's bearable for you, right? So that's what I use. I use the water pressure. After you use your water pressure, then you use your mouthwash. Therefore, when you're finished, your mouth is just fresh. That's like, you close every, you basically always close it off with the mouthwash, right? What I use for mouthwash is I use the Listerine, the original Listerine. That is the most strongest. And that, when I mean that Listerine works, it works. It does burn, but it works, okay? It definitely works. It's the strongest, right? So again, routine is important. Routines are important. Brush your teeth, brush it properly, floss every single tooth. After you floss, you oil pull. After you oil pull, you scrape your tongue. After you finish scraping your tongue, after you rinse out your mouth with water, then you use the water flosser. That's up to you if you want to use that. I use that. And then after you use the water flosser, go in with your favorite mouthwash, my favorite Listerine original. Okay? I promise you guys, if you follow this routine, your breath won't smell good all day. Even when you have drinks like matcha or coffee, your breath is going to smell good. I drink a lot of matcha tea. I notice my tongue gets really white throughout the day because I do drink matcha tea and I drink like oat milk and all that with the tea. So my tongue does get white throughout the day, but my breath smells fresh all day. Okay. And you do the same routine at night. Every single thing is the same at night. The only difference is you don't have to oil pull at night. So you just brush your teeth at night, you floss, you, you, you tongue scrape, okay? After you tongue scrape, you use the, the pressure flosser. After you use the pressure flosser, then you use your mouthwash, and then you're done, 
right? So that's how you keep your breath fresh. And I want to also mention something. Do you guys see this thing that's on the back of the throat? Yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody has experienced this at least once in their life. This little bugger right here smells so bad. They're using witchcraft manipulation on you so you're, you have no strength, your energy's drained, and you can't even brush your teeth properly. You can't do the extra things like floss and wash your tongue and everything like that because you're so drained. You have to understand something. If you're not doing every single routine that I explained to you, in this video relating to your breath what ends up happening is the little white stuff that builds up on your teeth that's all going to be collected in your mouth and it's going to form into a ball and this ball is going to get caught around your tonsils area and no matter how much you brush your teeth that that little ball is going to make your breath stink no matter how much you brush your teeth reason being is because if you are not flossing every day if you are not oil pulling every day you don't even have to use the flossing pressure, the, pre the pressure flosser like I have. But again, like I said, the reason why I use the pressure flosser is because it gets things out that are hidden, things that I cannot see. So you have to understand that that little ball in the back of your tonsils is buildup. It's buildup from all the days you did not brush your teeth properly. Guess what? If you are doing this routine thoroughly, what do you have in your mouth for there to be a buildup? Nothing. And that's how you're going to keep your breath fresh. So if you have one of these or you've been noticing that you have one of these, it's because there's been so much buildup. It's because you're not flossing properly. It's because you're not, you don't have to strengthen the energy to brush your teeth properly or to take care of yourself. It's because you're not oil pulling. And again, you may brush your teeth and think everything is gone. Everything is clean. But if you are not doing these little routines, trust me, there's going to be hidden build up that's going to create this little ball that's going to end up hiding behind there so you want to make sure you can prevent that by doing everything that i mentioned in this video i also want to mention that there is a form of witchcraft where you know when you are being attacked with witchcraft and you are under affliction if you have the gift to smell they will target that gift to smell as well as in you know you may be around people who don't smell they smell good but for some reason every person that you're around you can visualize what they smell like you will visualize you know on their dirty days and that is a form of witchcraft when that happens to you it is a tormenting type of witchcraft it's no different from when you're having tormenting dreams tormenting visions and these are not dreams from god or visions from god these are dreams from the enemy to torment you it's the same concept when they try to target your smell or target your taste like when they try to feed you negative things in the spiritual realm or try to make you eat gross things in the spirit this is because of witchcraft it is the same concept when it comes to smell witches and warlocks will target you to where every person you look at you may get a disgusting vision you may get a fornicating type of vision you may get a gross type of vision and it feels like no matter where you look or who you look at all the visions or all the thoughts that you're getting are toxic and negative and gross and this is also how they target your smell so every person you look at every person you think about you're always smelling a weird smell and they're not even around you this is how they this is this is their way of making your gifts unpleasant and this is their way of making you want to run away from your gifts so this is another specific type of target that they do in the spirit but it's not very common but it does happen to many of those people who have specific gifts the way how they do this is they find out what your strongest gifts are if they know that you're a seer or they know that you have the gift of smell they try to target these specific gifts and they try to make it as unpleasantable as possible so now I want to discuss the revelation that God gave me a while back. And this may trigger some people. And here's the thing. I do not speak about race. I think that we are all equal. We are all loved by God. But he mentioned something particularly in a prophetic word that I did not post. And reason being was because he wanted me to add this into the older video. Okay. So it's very hard for me to talk about this. It's very hard for me to explain this. But the other day... The Lord showed me a group of women, particularly black women, and he showed me a group of them standing together. And he let me know that there is specific rituals, specific curses that have been done, not only by people, you know, that are in our bloodline, but that has been done centuries ago in the slavery days. And it has even caused a lot of odor. A lot of these rituals were done to cause odor. Okay. And a lot of it is also mainly targeting black women. And I'm not, I understand everybody is a victim of this. Any race is a victim of this. But the Lord specifically showed me a while back that 
there was specific people that were targeting black women relating to the odor sense okay and this is something that has been done from centuries ago and this is something that has been done in the bloodline particularly the black bloodline okay and again this is not an easy thing for me to say I did not even know how I was going to articulate it but the only way I can you know articulate the best is just being completely honest and this is something that he told me that has been affecting a lot of black women and reason being is because right now there is um there is a lot of demand for black women you see the genders of black and, and and of black men and black women going back and forth with each other there is something in the spiritual realm there is something in the bloodline that is purposely trying to get black women and black men to fight it's definitely some type of warfare that's going on but it's also a specific type of ritual and curse that is being done to turn black men and black women against each other a part of the curse that i saw that was going on in the spirit is they are targeting the body parts of specific black women similar to when i gave you guys a word a while back and i saw that they were there was a specific ritual that was done that was targeting hispanic people and i talked about that ritual with the heads in the jar this is a similar thing except it's targeting black women relating to their body sense and their body parts okay and i understand again i'm gonna say it again I am not excluding that there's other people that go through this. There's other people that go through this from different cultures, ethnicities, and backgrounds. I'm just speaking on a specific prophetic word that I received a while back that there is specific curses and rituals that are being done to specifically target black women. Also because black women are right now um, one of the top uh, people who are entrepreneurs who are making good income right now. So there's a lot of targeting of them and a lot of targeting of them to, you know, for the black men and women to turn against each other. So I just wanted to, you know, add this in here because it is a part of this older um, topic. And again, this was not easy for me to say, <laughs> but I just wanted to be obedient. So this is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. The next episode is going to be witchcraft symptoms, beauty spells. In that episode, I'm going to talk about the types of things that they do to you to try to ruin your appearance, ruin your booty. <laughs> In that, <laughs> where did that come from? Why did I say booty? Like, what, what, where did that come from? What? Anyways, the next episode is going to, oh my gosh, the next episode is going to be witchcraft symptoms beauty spells. In that episode, I'm going to be teaching you guys about the types of things that they do to affect your appearance, your hair, your body, and the things that they try to do to make you look less attractive. Okay. That is an important segment. So we're going to get into that segment. Okay. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for watching. There's many more segments to come. Please just be patient with me guys. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Bye.